Welcome back everybody. What you're seeing right here is uh, a crane truck uh, because we have to pull some pumps. Last night I got called in uh, for a, uh, a pump fail alarm in our influent lift station and it turned out to be uh, a motor over temp fault on the VFD which it qualifies it for an immediate pump pull, automatic right out of the gate. You can actually see why it's cleaning its tools. We are done. Um, and so in the following part of the video, what you're going to be seeing is us pull these pumps, clear them, and you're going to see what ridiculous thing we pulled out of the pump that faulted. And then we went ahead and pulled the other pump and uh, cleared it as well. It did have some rags in it. And then um, what we're going to talk about, uh, since this is an opportunity to discuss pumps and motors, uh, we're going to go through the uh, different kinds of pumps and motors you're going to run into in a wastewater plant um, and a couple other uh, test items that uh, you're going to need to know. So uh, let's get these pumps pulled and uh, get them cleared. Looks like a mop head. I need something to cut it. You got a knife? Yeah. Thank you, sir. That's gotta be a mop it's head. It's gotta be a mop head. Or like four shirts. Yeah. The one, this one time I got called in and it was somebody's uh, underwear in this pump, in one of these pumps. No way. Yeah, underwear. What is, yeah, it's, that's a, yeah, look at that. It's a mop. Well, it's like a dry mop. Yeah, one of those. Yeah. yeah. This guy up here which I'm half tempted to bump it and see if it'll fling it. Almost, they keep doing that. Yeah, there you go. There we go. Look at that. Satisfying. Yeah, propeller spinning free. Um, yeah, looks beautiful. That was it. Okay, so those pumps were cleared and put back in the wet well and uh, they're back in service. So we're, we're actually here a few days later. I wanted to do a demonstration for you on um, a couple of different pumps. Uh, these are centrifugal pumps and there's two times, types of pumps you're going to run into. They are positive displacement and centrifugal. Um, so what we're going to be doing in this episode, the rest of this episode is just going over um, a centrifugal pump and another uh, maybe two positive displacement pumps before we go to the whiteboard and talk about a couple important items for you. And this is going to kick off a greater pump motor series where uh, we're going to get into the weeds on the different types of positive, positive displacement pumps. You're going to see me make some repairs. I've got um, a diaphragm trash pump that needs a bearing replacement. We're going to do some cool stuff. But um, before I go too far, uh, some of you might have noticed I did actually didn't detach the volute from that pump when I was clearing it. Uh, it was pretty obvious it was the mop head. And if I could avoid messing with the brittle cast iron on these old pumps, I do avoid that. Um, this is, don't let the epoxy fool you. This was just came back from rebuild. Um, I pulled this one out uh, about six months ago and the, the seal on the top had come detached. And so it went in for rebuild and they always epoxy coat it when it's done. Um, so this is old stuff. If I were to break that volute, um, it could it could be eight to $10,000 whoopsie daisy. So I, I'm kind of risk averse when it comes to that. Uh, just because I do it like that doesn't mean you have to do it like that. I do this channel to show you what some of this looks like. I don't do it to tell you how to operate in your plant. I really try to be clear about that. Um, but if you have anything to add on what you saw uh, in the last segment, please put it in the comments below. I love having conversations with uh, folks about this stuff. So what you're seeing right here is a seven and a half horsepower Vaughn chopper pump. Um, it has uh, a motor right here. It's actually a pump motor assembly. So the pump is here, about where my fingers are down, and the motor is here. And it's, you know, there's seals in there, and there's a shaft uh, where the, the motor couples to the um, pump shaft, and electricity spins the motor shaft, and, and then it converts energy to that pump, and then it spins the pump. In this case, it's a centrifugal pump. This is a four inch submersible. What does that mean? That's a four inch discharge right there, okay? And it uh, mounts, there's a bracket. I'm kind of regretting I didn't point it out. If you go back to the last video, uh, part of this video, you'll see a big black bracket sitting on there. That's actually to help guide it down the slide rails into the wet well, and then it hooks onto its discharge flange um, down there, and it creates a nice seal and, and sends stuff into the wastewater plant. So this is the completely assembled part. Here is a Myers pump right next to it uh, from a different part in our plant um, that's just designed to move water. And so uh, um, this one you'll see has impellers right here. Uh, they should spin freely by hand. Uh, there should be no real tightness in there. 
And then, um, well, in terms, I mean, relatively speaking, it shouldn't be hard for me to turn it. And then um, this is the volute, and here's the motor right here. And then here's where the motor and the pump connect to each other. Um, so what's a volute? This is a really good thing to show you because you need to know, you're gonna be asked about a volute. It's the spiral uh, looking part of the pump, a centrifugal pump's body. You're gonna find volutes on centrifugal pumps, okay? And um, what happens is it pulls the water using centrifugal force into the intake here and it builds up speed, okay? And, and it's flinging the water and as it builds up that speed, what happens is something called Bernoulli's principle. Imagine this is all full and uh, uh, when you've got a lot of speed in, in a full area and then that water slows down because now we're going to a wider area, that velocity slows down, what happens is the pressure goes higher. So this is a way that it builds pressure. Look up Bernoulli's principle. I'll, I'll write it on the whiteboard um, at the end of this video and we can talk a little bit more about why you need to know that. You'll probably be tested on it. Um, I've already used it, but this is the, the word, but this is a flange connection, okay, flange. And um, impellers, motor, and this is, uh, these are leads right here. These are the electrical leads. And uh, this is, these are both 230 volt three phase motors. Um, half of our plant is 230 volt, half of our plant is 460. So um, these are on the old part of the plant. Okay, so that's a centrifugal pump in a nutshell. I'm gonna do a whole different video on centrifugal pumps. Uh, like I said, God, there's a there's a rabbit hole I could go down on every single, I mean, just volutes in Bernoulli's principle or just three phase versus single phase. So um, when we get to the whiteboard, we'll talk about the two types of electricity you'll get involved in, the multiple types of pumps you might run into. And then I think that might just wrap it up for this episode so we can keep it just as an overview. Uh, but for now, let's move on to a positive displacement pump so you can kind of see what that looks like. Okay, what you're seeing in front of you here is a type of positive displacement pump called a lobe pump. Okay, so here's the motor. This is a 460 volt three phase motor. Um, we've got the shaft coming up through here and some pump components. And then right here is where the business happens. And if you can imagine like these lobes, it's hard because I've got only one hand, but they, they move and they displace the water um, to pull it through uh, the membranes. And so there's a uh, follow the pipe up. Um, it goes actually into the membrane chamber. And the reason uh, lobe pumps are used on membrane filtration is because they can um, create a gentle, steady flow. And on these, we're actually pulling a vacuum. Okay, we're not pushing against them. Um, and so these are really ideal for membrane filtration. Uh, just, a, just an example of a positive displacement pump. I'm sure we are going to, one day I'm gonna have to break these open and we'll do a, a great tutorial on those. But uh, just for now, just know that a lobe, lobe pump is one of the many types of positive displacement. All right, so what you're seeing here is called a peristaltic pump. If you look at the actual um, motion right there, you're gonna see the tube pushed against the head, the plastic on the head. And what that does is it, it's, again, displacing um, a liquid. These rollers move around like that in a rolling fashion. And, and when we get to disinfection, I'll actually change the tube out and we'll talk about it. But um, it pulls uh, the, the chemical up and then it pushes back out the discharge line. And here's some controls right here. But this I use for sodium hypochlorite. That's another version of a positive displacement pump. So this is the very last uh, pump we're gonna look at. If, if I took you to every pump in my plant, we'd be here for a long time. Uh, this is the start of a brand new series. So um, trust me, you're gonna see a lot more pumps than what you're seeing right here. But um, I just wanted to give you another example of a positive displacement pump. Uh, this is a progressive cavity pump. So you have your motor here and it's belt driven. Not all of them are like this. Some of them have the motor mounted back there. Um, and there's a gear reduction in here. Um, and so anyway, uh, this is the pump body. There's the suction side right there on that pipe, pulls it in. And then right in here is a rotor that um, kind of looks like a corkscrew. Uh, look up a progressive cavity pump on Google Images and you'll see what that looks like. Um, yeah, but it's kind of a corkscrew style pump. And this is for pumping sludge, uh, high solids liquids. Centrifugal pumps are not good at, at pumping high solids liquids. Um, so let's go back to the whiteboard now. Uh, like I said, if we did this a tour of the whole plant, we'd be here forever. So let's go to the whiteboard and let's talk about some things you need to know about for your um, exams regarding pumps and motors and where we're gonna go in this series from here. Let's go. Okay, everybody, welcome to the whiteboard segment. Before I jump too far into it, as always, I'm gonna ask if you're getting anything out of this video, please like, subscribe, pass to your friends. Let's help folks get certified. And actually uh, a little uniqueness when it comes to pumps and motors, distribution operators are, I think, the ones that are tested on the most about motors. Uh, wastewater treatment and drinking water treatment, we get asked about them, but uh, distribution folks get 
uh, the, you know, the big bats. So if you know somebody testing for their distribution test, please uh, send this video to them. I think it may help them. Um, okay, I'm not gonna jump too far into motors. Notice I only have one bullet here and it's three phase or single phase. Um, that's the type of electric electrical service you can have. Uh, there's all sorts of stuff to get into with motors, like horsepower and all that stuff. Uh, I'm mostly wanting to focus on the pump styles and just a general overview. So we're not gonna jump too far into that. The one thing I'll say is the, the one you're gonna be most asked about is three phase. A single phase is not nearly as versatile. It's way inefficient in comparison and it's harder on the motors. Uh, three phase, conversely, is easier on the motors. It's way more efficient. You can do way more stuff with it. Um, and uh, yeah, we're, we're, we'll do a whole whiteboard segment on the many things you need to know about three phase electricity. Um, so that's really all I'm gonna say about motors. So the three types of pumps, I haven't mentioned it yet, but the airlift pump is one of them, the centrifugal pump and the positive displacement pump. What the heck is an airlift pump? Uh, so in my career, I've worked in all sorts of different flow rates, uh, mostly smaller plants, but I've worked in some really small plants. And one of them, or a couple of them, had these airlift pumps uh, used to uh, return activated sludge and waste activated sludge. Um, I was actually asked about the functionality of an airlift pump on my grade three wastewater. And thank God I worked in a small plant because I knew exactly what they were talking about. I've not seen them used in bigger plants, but if you work in a bigger plant and use an airlift pump, please let me know what you use it for. Um, but like I said, we used it for the RAS and the WAS, and they don't have a lot of mechanical parts. Really, if you can imagine, I kind of did a little drawing here. Imagine a vertical pipe at the bottom. There's no valving down there. It's just an open pipe. And there's an uh, air hose that goes down there and is attached to it. And it uses compressed air from a blower to deliver air down there. And it, it uses a, um, a, com a compressed air to lift the liquid. Okay, it kind of makes a, a mixture of, of air and the density, it pulls like an air bubble up and it pulls it up. It uses, it's a similar idea to a DAF, way less sophisticated than dissolved air flotation. Um, that's not exactly the same thing, but it's the same concept. You're injecting air into um, a liquid and you're making it lift, okay? It's, it's really a cool thing to use um, in smaller plants. Um, and again, if you use it in a big plant, please let us know what you use it for, but know what airlift pumps are, look that up. Centrifugal pumps. So that was the very first pump you saw us talk about. These are high flow, low pressure pumps. Um, and they use centrifugal force, the force of spinning, okay? Um, if you're trying to move a lot of liquid, these are the ones you wanna use. They are designed for continuous flow applications, but with low solids content like influent, effluent, and RAS. Well, isn't RAS high solids content? Relative to effluent, of course it is. But relative to sludge, no, it's not. Relative to chemical, no, it's not. Um, a centrifugal pump can move uh, 5,000 MLSS, okay? Because what is that still, what, 99.5% water, right? So that's still not technically a super thick um, liquid, even though to us it looks pretty thick. It's, it's still mostly water, like over 99% water. So uh, the most, the centrifugal pump is mostly, um, I'm sorry, let me back up. The most common form of a RAS pump is a centrifugal pump, okay? Even though I've worked in plants with airlift pumps as the RAS, uh, that's, that might be asked on your, your um, exam. Uh, they use Bernoulli's principle. We talked about that already. Um, and that principle states that the speed of fluid occurs simultaneously with decrease in pressure. Uh, so the speed of the fluid will increase as the, the, the pressure decreases, and the pressure will increase as the speed decreases. Uh, what does that mean? Um, I think what's really cool if you try to do this put a pressure gauge on your garden hose, find a little fit like a T on your garden hose, and then put your pressure gauge on there and see that it's at, let's say 60 PSI, and then open that valve wide open. The fluid starts to move really fast because your valve's open, but what does the pressure do? It drops. I think that's the best way I can kind of give you a home test you could do just in your backyard is uh, that's Bernoulli's principle. Um, if you are an engineer and you have a better way to describe Bernoulli's principle, please put it in the comments below. Or if you're not an engineer, I just, engineers, that's typically their, their wheelhouse. Um, if this pumps against a closed valve, it will build pressure, but it's likely not gonna blow the whole assembly up. I've deadheaded pumps, centrifugal pumps before. And uh, what happens is it's likely to damage the pump or motor. Uh, you can get overheating. Uh, some pumps now, like submersibles in wells, now their impellers are plastic. So if you, um, have them pump against 
uh, nothing and it's trying to push the water, it'll spin, spin, spin. And what will eventually happen is that water will heat up from friction and it can distort, it can melt or dishape the impellers and then they're screwed up and you got to replace them. Um, but I would say that I, if you get a question about um, what kind of pump should you not have a closed valve against, they're, they're looking for positive displacement because it'll blow things to smithereens. Um, I, I'm, I'm dramatic, but it will blow stuff up. I mean, it'll break stuff if because uh, these build a lot of pressure. Um, but this is the damage here is most likely going to be to the pump. Um, I think that's pretty good for, for a good overview of centripetal pumps. Uh, if you want to add something, comments below, as usual, please. Positive displacement. How these work, instead of spinning like a centripetal pump or using air mixture um, as an airlift pump, what these do is they, like imagine a piston pulling back and it causes a suction uh, to come in and then a piston will push back down and it'll displace the liquid and it'll go to where it's supposed to go, okay? They draw fluid into a vacant cavity and then push it out, all right? Um, there are so many types of positive displacement pumps. I have listed, there's like categories and subcategories. I kind of listed the different individual styles. So lobe pumps, that's our permeate pump I showed you um, earlier in the video. Progressive cavity, that's my sludge pump style. Peristaltic, I use that for chemical feeding. Diaphragm pumps is also a chemical feed style pump. Um, a piston style, I've used those for pumping sludge. Um, just a different version. Um, that's like a piston that kind of comes up and then it pulls and pushes. Um, and gear, I've never used a gear positive displacement that I know of. Maybe I have, uh, but uh, those are the so many different types of positive displacement. So um, these are used for high solids content like sludge, chemical, and slurries. What's an example of sludge? This is going to be something pulled off of a gravity thickener to go into a digester or pulled off the digester. You're moving really high solids content, like a 96% water would be a high solids content. That's 4% uh, solids. A centrifugal pump, what'll happen is it'll spin and it'll get those solids and then it'll just like, it'll like kind of turn into cake batter. It won't be able to push it, you know? Um, so that's why you need uh, things like this. Uh, chemical, uh, again, uh, chemical dosing, you don't use uh, centrifugal pumps for that because you typically, like if you're using a diaphragm style chemical feed pump, you're typically pushing against high pressure, okay? And that's a more of a positive displacement um, situation, okay? And um, the other thing you'll do is slurries. What's an example of a slurry? Like say you need to feed some lime into your digester or something, or, or uh, if it comes in a powder form, you're gonna slurry it up, it'll be a little thicker, and then you're gonna use a positive displacement pump of some kind to push that um, slurry, okay? Um, there are, there's a lot to all of that, but I would say that's a really good place to start for positive displacement centrifugal pumps, motors, and airlift pumps. Uh, we'll probably never talk about airlift pumps ever again. Um, that's the only time I've ever seen it, and I was asked about it, but what I just explained to you on how they work should be enough to get you through if you get to ask that question um, on a wastewater exam. Okay, uh, this is really exciting because this is gonna kick off a whole new series. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna just go all in on pumps and motors or just let it come to me as it comes to me. I was actually hoping to get to trickling filters next um, it, it'll probably, probably be a hybrid, but, um, if you have anything to add, please put it in the comments below. If you have any questions about pumps or motors, comment, please. Um, I'll do a video for you. Uh, the next one I'm going to probably get out is, um, some, maybe some horsepower math and some other stuff like that. But, um, uh, until next time, thanks for tuning in guys. And we'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.